Hi and welcome to Poly Originals with Fiona Abel Smith. So for today's project I thought we'd have fun and do some festive baubles. So the ones I'm going to do today are going to be these glittery ones, but you don't have to go glittery. And you can either use glitter in the line that's inscribed around the outside or just paint. So completely up to you how bright and spangly you make them. So these are good for seasonal festivities but also good for weddings, for birthdays, just sort of brightening up any room or festive occasion. Because there's such a choice as to whether you do them with glitter or not or paint or however you want to decorate them, the equipment list is fairly long because I sort of cover all the different things for you and all the different options. Um, but as always, just watch the video if you want to. You can always come back to the equipment list once you've decided what you want to do and how you want to make yours. So let's start by going through what we're going to need for today's project. So let's go through the equipment you need for today's session. So I'm going to put all of that on one side for a minute because to make the basic bauble covering all we need is this sort of equipment. So you need obviously to start with a bauble to cover. So I'm going to use a glass one and when we do it we're just going to take the top out. You can use some of the plastic ones and I have done a video previously where I did some spiral designs on a bauble and I covered in great detail there how you would cover a plastic bauble and all the drawbacks of doing that as opposed to a glass one. So I'll put a link in the details below the video. So if you're thinking about using a plastic one, then go and have a look at that video first. But I'm using a glass one, so there's no problem with that. So there we go, glass one done. As usual, I'll be using a polymer clay blade. I sometimes refer to these as tissue blades. A little craft knife. To make a template I'm going to use a little sheet of A4 paper which I'm also going to use to help catch some glitter on which I'll go into details of later on. Something like the Sharpe or a pen to draw on the outside of your glass ball and also to create the template with. And a little piece of tracing or wax paper, something that's nice and clear and we want just enough that we have to be able to fold in half and it's going to be longer than the outside or going around the width of half of your ball. Scissors obviously to cut the paper. We need a little bit of either liquid polymer clay and I've just decanted some into a little pot here or some PVA glue, either would work, which is a little spot of it just to help the clay stick to the outside of the ball. Some form of thinnish needle or um, something that's going to be able to, to inscribe those lines going round the side and dig into the clay. I've actually gone for two millimetre cable needles um, because they're not too sharp, they don't dig in too much, but a, a darning needle, some form of needle will work just as well. Cocktail stick tends to pull the clay up a little bit too much, so maybe avoid a cocktail stick, but if you've got nothing else then obviously use one of those. To put our sheet of clay on and just to work on, I've just got a, a laminated sheet. This happens to be the plain back of one of the um, squared sheets that I use a lot, so you may well have already got one of these. If you haven't got a laminated sheet, then just a piece of this sort of size of greaseproof, wax, baking paper, something like that, just to put the clay on when we put the glitter on, just to make it nice and easy. To bake in, I'm just going to use a bowl. I happen to have these um, semicircle half sphere bowls, so I'll use that because it just fits really nicely for the size of this. But any bowl will do, and particularly if it's got one that's got a nice curved bottom. When we bake, we'll use some aluminium foil to cover the whole piece in, just to tent over the top, so that should the oven spike during baking, the clay doesn't burn. When it comes to decorating the baubles, there are loads of options. I have done some simply with plain clay, so that's one of the options. You'll see from the start, I ended up going for the nice glittery version because, you know, there's nothing wrong with a bit of sparkle. So I have got the ultra fine biodegradable glitters. Now you can buy these online or from craft stores and I've just gone for colours, which are the colours that I'm planning to use for um, the decoration I'm doing today. So I've gotten the purple, green, red and gold, but obviously use whatever combination you want. If you don't have any of these glitters, then you can use mica powder instead, so that's an option. Option. When we're doing the tracery line around the outside, I add some glitter into some acrylic paint. The glitter with the paint makes a nice stiff mixture which you can really rub well into all of the grooves we're going to create. If you don't have any acrylic paint, then you can simply use PVA glue with the glitter, that works just as well. If you don't have any glitter, you can simply use the paint, whichever combination you want. If you've got neither the paint 
or the glitter but I've got glue and mica powder you can add some mica powder into the glue and use that instead so just use what you have to hand if you have used glitter then we're going to need to coat it um, with a layer of varnish or something like the Renaissance wax, something along those lines, just to act as a sealant so that when we put the paint layer on over the top, it doesn't stick to the bit that we have um, put the glitter on. When I'm mixing the glitter and the paint, I will use one of these little pots. It's easy to use and nicely cleanable. If you don't have that, then an empty jam jar lid works just as well. When I'm using the varnish to save contaminating the whole pot and getting, getting it full of glitter, I will decant a little varnish into a small pot. But again, an old bottle top lid works just as well for that. When I mix up the glitter and the um, acrylic paint. I'm going to use one of these spatulas just because it makes it easy and if you don't like getting your hands dirty then one of these is fantastic for taking it up and then just rubbing it on the outside of the ball. So that's an option you can go for. As well as just doing the segments you can add cut out shapes into it and I will show you how to do that. So for doing that you might just want a variety of cutters. So I've gone for sort of star shapes and the round when I'm doing that. Just ordinary PVA glue works very well for what we're doing today. And it's quite handy to have a bunch of cocktail sticks to hand um, so that we can use these to give ourselves like a little bit of a handle on the bauble when we're doing the messy bit. When it comes to varnishing the baubles or working with them, what I will often do is stick a whole load of cocktail sticks inside the opening. When you get close to being full, stick them into the middle and you should end up with a nice handle. And then when we're varnishing or when you're working, I've also got a little piece of discarded packaging. This is just some of the polystyrene that comes when you've got um, something new that comes in packaging. And this works really well because you can then stick the cocktail sticks into the polystyrene and that will hold your ball well in place if you need to varnish it or if anything else you're doing to it, if you want to keep it out of the way and not get your hands messy. Because the weight of the bauble will have increased quite a lot, um, I usually use some glue just to reattach the top back on to the finished piece, just so that it holds um, with the extra weight we've added. As you can see, this is something I've been using whilst I'm doing the tutorial for you. And this is just an empty lid to one of the boxes I store my clay in. And I've just taken it off. I've got a sheet of APOR paper, which I fold in half, so I've got a groove inside. And when I'm adding my glitter, I do it inside this box to try and protect the work surface as much as I can. Because as you know, when you're working with glitter, it goes everywhere. Apart from that, I use a tile to work on. I have gone through an awful lot of the biodegradable wet wipes or simply use wet cloths if you prefer and some plain tissues just to keep everything nice and dry if you've used the wet cloths. And the last thing we use as normal is a pasta machine dedicated to polymer clay use um, just to get nice thin um, layers of clay. But if you don't have one of those, then simply roll your clay to a nice thin setting between two stacks of playing cards and then you get nice flat sheets of clay. So having done all of that, let's move on to the clay we're going to use for today's session. Today I'm working with Fimo Soft and I've gone for the plum and the ruby red. I just thought they were nice festive colours. So I've actually got three quarters of an ounce or 21 grams of each of these and I will get them conditioned um, in their separate colours and put through setting number four of my pasta machine. So slightly thinner than I normally do. We're using quite a thin sheet today so we don't add as much weight onto the finished piece. If you're using an extra colour to add into the more complex one, which I say I will show you later, then I've just got half an ounce or 14 grams, and for this one I've gone for the emerald green. But because I'm covering these in glitter, it doesn't really matter what colour you're using, but I like to try and stay close to the colours I'm using so that you don't see the underneath colour coming out. However, if you are using glitter, you could always use scrap clay underneath, or don't worry too much about using pristine colours, just use something that's close to the colour you're going to use. So as I say, I'll get all of those conditioned. If you're unsure about conditioning polymer clay, I do have a video with a few hints and tips for that, and I'll put a link to that in the description below. So, get these colours conditioned, and let's start having fun. So whether you're working with a glass bauble or um, a plastic one covered in polymer clay, the first thing we need to do is to mark out where our pieces of clay are going to go. It may seem quite daunting, but in actual fact it's not too bad at all. You need a plain piece of paper, some scissors, 
a marker pen, the Sharpies work well for this, and of course your bubble. So I'm just going to chop off a thin strip of paper all the way along the edge of the sheet. So take the paper, put it up to the midpoint, and then just carefully get it to, it comes all the way around and comes out to the other end. Now if you get it first time like that, perfect. If not, just adjust it until it sort of goes together. And then mark on your paper where the overlap is. And then chop off at that point. We're then going to use this to mark out our segments. Now we're going to have eight, so I'm going to fold it in half, give a nice crease at the midpoint, fold in half again, crease again and then fold one last time and crease down nicely. Then open it up and mark with your pen where all the creases are. Then put it back onto your bauble, fit it back round so that it fits. Don't worry if like mine it's a little bit smaller just means that you've had it somewhere slightly different when you first cut it and then mark and we're going to mark top bottom and where the midpoint point is so top bottom and where the midpoint and do that all the way around when you've got them all done if you're lucky, and it's quite often these glass ones have a little dot just where the bottom is, you will have a bottom dot. But even if you don't, start with the top bit. So start from one piece and aim towards the middle of the neck. So just take your pen up and draw up towards the middle. Join it down towards the extra little dot you've got. And say so if you've got something towards the bottom, then that's great because you can just join those up. If you haven't, then just aim for where you think is the midpoint to start with. Repeat on the other side and hopefully you'll get those two to join up. And then the tester is when you turn it around the other, other way, do your quarter bits and if they join up in the same place then you know you've pretty much got or a good line. If you're adding extra decorated pieces it's sometimes nice to have the midline so I will just go in between where those dots are just drawing one bit at a time and that should give you a relatively even midline should you need it. Okay, there is your bauble, all nicely marked up with all the segments that you need. So having done that, the next thing we need to do is to make a template for these shapes so that we know what size to cut our clay into. And we can do that by using a piece of tracing or greaseproof paper. This is actually greaseproof. And I've got a piece that is much bigger than I need and I've just folded it, it in half. You can then put it halfway up one of your segments and because it's tracing or grease proof you should be able to see the black line underneath. Now work on the basis you are not going to get this right first time but you should be able to see enough just sort of pull it down and see roughly where the template should be. If you want to put it in more detailed with the pen, but then cut larger. So I'm just going to go around the outside just slightly larger than we had. Open it out. Put it up to your decoration and see how close you are. So just try it on one segment. Now this should be bigger and it is bigger because obviously it was larger either side so now you can start to shave it down slightly
and just keep opening it up and putting it up to test it for size and shape. And don't just test one because it's amazing how different these can be even though you think you've been fairly neat. Check all of them and see how you're doing. So for instance, I'm still quite wide over here. Check whether that's the same for all of them. It does seem to be. The other thing you can do, because this should be even top and bottom, is you can fold it in half that way. And you can see there that I'm definitely larger on that bit than I am at the top bit. So shave a bit off. And just take your time. Just keep going backwards and forwards until you have a shape that's more or less what you want. So that's pretty good. Just going to try it on a couple more. Yep, that's fine. That's fine. I'm not worried about the fact that it's going over the top here because I can just chop that piece off. And that way you don't have to worry about which way up your piece is. But no, I'm happy with that. The template seems to be fine. So that's the template. And now we can start using the clay. So I've put my clay through on setting number four of the pasta machine, which is a, a medium setting. And what I want to do is to take four of these out of it. Now, I may not get four out of that. So the easiest way to do this, particularly with the amount of clay we've got, is to actually fold your piece in half and get your piece the same width. So what I'm going to do is fold it in half and just pull it slightly wider, put it back through the pasta machine, and I'll repeat that a couple of times until I've got my piece wide enough to be able to take four of these across the front of it. That's now the right height, but say just check. So it's one, two, three, should just about do that. If you're, if it's very tight, you can always do a tiny little fingerprint just to check that you've got enough room. It is tight, but it will work, so that's fine. So I've already got my clay nicely set out on the back of the laminated sheet, so that's the piece I'm going to work on. I'm going to take a piece of A4 paper and fold it in half. So it's ready creased. I'm going to take the lid of the box that I work in. You can then open the A4 sheet of paper out inside, but it's ready creased so that when you've finished, the glitter's going to collect nicely inside that and any excess you can put back inside the bag. Put my sheet on top of that and then we're going to get our glitter. So I've got the nice purple glitter that's going to match with the clay I'm using and I'm putting quite a nice big dollop on. Most of this will end up going back in the bag, so it doesn't matter if you put too much. And all I'm going to do, very gently, start to rub in little circular motions across the clay so that the glitter sits and starts to embed right on the very top of the clay. Once it's all embedded in, you should just be able to wipe off any excess. be left with a nice sheet of glittery clay. I'm just going to tap the excess off onto the paper underneath, um, wipe off any excess from the sheet and then as I say I will use the groove in the um, paper to collect the glitter and put it back into the bag. cleaned most of the glitter off the paper, I'll pop that back inside there so we can reuse it for the next colour in a few moments time. And now we're going to start creating that nice lined pattern. So taking this small um, cable needle, just a two millimetre one, I'm just going to start drawing lines effectively across my sheet of clay. Just go backwards and forwards. I'm not going deep enough to go all the way through, but I'm going deep enough to create grooves. I don't know if you can see that there, it's difficult to tell with the... Uh, clay on. You will occasionally find like here you've got a bub bubble where the clay wasn't sitting properly on the bottom. Don't worry about that. It's not going to matter when we pick it up in a minute but just keep going backwards and forwards to create random lines. Thank you. 
Okay, so hopefully you can see there where all the lines are. It's completely up to you how many or how few you do. The more you do, the more matching up you have to do at the later stage. The fewer you do, then the less you'll actually see of these lines going across the surface of your finished piece. When you're finished, simply find your template, lay it down on your pattern sheet and cut out four of those shapes. When you've done that, you can start peeling away the Now, if it, when you peel this away, it breaks into pieces where you've put the lines through, then you know you've done your lines quite deeply, in which case it's definitely better to get hold of your tissue blade or your polymer clay blade and just gently slide it underneath and wiggle underneath so you get your shapes off in one piece. You can put them back together if they fall apart, but obviously it's easier if they're in the right shape. So just carefully go through and get all four pieces off. Keep those pieces to one side just at the moment so that if something happens with these and you suddenly need to patch a bit, you've got some spare. Get your bubble, get some of the liquid clay or the PVA glue, whichever you're going to use, and just put a small dob on alternate pieces. So just the four we're about to put the clay on. And then just put a little bit just in that segment. Now the reason we're only doing the segments we're going to cover, one, because obviously we're not covering the other segments at the moment, we're only doing four, but also because the liquid clay will actually melt the Sharpie um, pen and you'll end up getting black all over your fingers, which can then go all over your clay, particularly if you're doing a light colour. So we're only going to do a little bit, because you only need a tiny bit just to help the clay stick. And having done that, pick up your first piece, and on one of the pieces you put the liquid clay on, just start laying it on very gently and bring it up towards the top. That's piece one. And just continue doing that, going around, adding all four pieces. When you've got all four pieces on, just cut off the bits by the neck. You don't want those going over the top. And then just have a look. You want to go down, have a look at all the sides, make sure that they're all nicely pressed down onto the surface. You can also then have a go back and have a look with your um, the needle that you use to make the lines and make sure that you haven't flattened or distorted any of the lines because they want to be nice and open where they meet. And also you want a nice straight edge. So just spend a little time going around and checking. When that's ready and you're all done, find the bowl you're planning to bake in, sit your bauble in, tent the whole piece in some aluminium foil and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. Once your piece is finished and come out of the oven and cooled, take your template and just check that the gaps in between aren't bigger than your template. If it's smaller, that's absolutely fine, just check that they're not bigger. I think we're okay on this one. That's fine. So then repeat exactly the same as we did for the purple clay with your red clay in as much as put it through on the pasta machine to get it to a size where you can cut four of your pieces. Put the um, glitter on in the same way and rub it smooth in and then take the excess off but do not put the lines in. And when you've done that, as before, just cut your four pieces. Take a little bit of the liquid clay and as before, just dot on the four empty places and rub a little bit over. And now carefully put one of the pieces up, starting right down in the corner and just gently sort of seeing whether or not it fits to the top. See how it fits, actually that one's not too bad. So I've just pressed it in along the one side, get that side up next to the purple. And as you press down this side, so you should start to see where it's going to overlap. So chop it off neatly at the top. 
and with a craft knife put your craft knife in next to the cut edge and then carefully pulling against the cut edge use that as a template to cut down any excess clay that needs to come away. Anywhere there's a slight gap you can just gently push the clay up against it and repeat that going around all four of your other pieces. So that one's got quite a big amount where it needs to come off all the way down but I'm just pressing up, pushing up against that purple so I can just cut off where the red needs to go and it should just slot down in. If you've got anywhere where, like here where I'd shaved quite a bit off so I've now got no glitter on this particular bit, either run your finger over till you've got, if you've got a lot of red there, or find your bag. Just dip your finger in your bag and go back and add any in where you need to add more glitter onto the red clay. And all we're going to do now Holding on to the bits that are baked, so holding on to the purple bits, we are just going to, with our same tool that we used to make the lines in the purple, going to join up the lines between the red and the purple to create a nice continuous flow of lines across the piece. Don't make them all go straight across. I mean, some of them are really obvious. You think, oh, that would definitely join up with that. But it's more fun if you take them so they sort of go down, meandering across in the same way we did our original lines. So I'd always start with one or two going up and across the main part and then just work your way down everywhere there's a line just add a line in You can have more than one line going in and out of a piece, so it doesn't have to just stick to have being one. So for instance, I can take this one up here and actually have it going up and into the same exit. So as long as they have somewhere where they're going to join on, that's all you need to do. When you're finished, just go through and check that every line going out has got one coming across from it. As we do with the purple, just make sure that all the lines are nicely visible and you haven't, by putting another one in, obscured one that was below it. And when you're happy with that segment, simply move on and repeat the same with the other three. When you've finished and you've made sure it's all nice and smooth, so what I'll do is I'll go over and just sort of rub down it slightly to make sure it's all flat and then go back in if necessary and create more grooves. Then just as before, pop it into the bowl where you're going to bake in, tent the whole thing in aluminium foil and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. Once it's cooled, I have stuffed the inside um, entrance to the bauble with lots of cocktail sticks and when they were just about full I've then taken a, my larger cable needle and literally just pushed it down the middle. That helps fill out the space and you can then add any extra needles that you want until you've got a nice firm hold which means you can hold your piece like this and varnish it. It also then means 
that with the piece of polystyrene I mentioned earlier, just the leftover piece from some packaging, I can then, once it's varnished, stick the needle in there. Any varnish, excess varnish, will drip down onto the top and drip harmlessly down to the bottom and it allows it to dry perfectly well like that. The other tip I'm going to do, because I've got glitter on here, the glitter does come off onto the brush, so rather than use directly from the um, bottle and get lots of glitter in your bottle, I just decant some into a small receptacle, not a lot, just a tiny bit. And then if this does get full of glitter, I haven't wasted the whole jar by getting it contaminated with glitter. So literally, just put it on, load the brush up, paint over. Because it's nicely in segments, I will do one colour at a time and then you know where you are. The other thing is when the brush is first um, full, it has got quite a lot of varnish on it and you'll find that it sticks into all those grooves. So I will do probably four go back get a bit more varnish and I didn't sort of really brush my brush down into that because again I don't want any glitter that's stuck on my brush to go back into the varnish because if I can I will put this back in the bottle if it's not contaminated and when you've gone over all the pieces then go back and brush across all those grooves because we don't want the varnish in the grooves to clog them up because the grooves are going to be filled with the paint and the glitter so just go back over until you've got it nicely done all out of the grooves and then we can stick it in the polystyrene and wait 20 minutes for the varnish to dry. I will do two coats because I find it gives even better um, sealant and means that you can really spread the paint on without worrying at all because it just rubs nicely off the varnish. So there we are and I say I'll put that to one side and let it dry. So I'll bring you back when I've done the second coat and we're all ready to go with adding the final bits. Okay, so with the varnish all dried, now it's time to have some fun and get really messy. Now obviously if you don't want to get messy, wear gloves. If you don't like getting your fingers dirty, either use one of these little spatulas um, when you're mixing up and put it on with that, in which case I would suggest you leave all the cocktail sticks and your stick in the end there so you can actually use that as a handle and put your thing over. But I'm quite happy getting my hands messy. So I've got my paint and I've got my glitter. Obviously I've got a whole load of wet cloths here ready so I can clean things off and I work on about at least five as I'm going through because we're going to get a lot of mess all over the place. If you want to just put a sheet of paper down um, because it's a tile I'm quite happy that I will just wipe any excess glitter and paint off the tile. As I mentioned beforehand, if you don't have paint or don't want to use paint, you can use liquid clay in which case you'd need to rebake um, the bauble or you could use PVA glue which works just as well. But I'll just put a a blob of paint in and the thing to do is you can always add more and always um, make more mixture up to fill in so don't do too much to start with because it's easier to add more than get left with quite a bit left over so I'm going to put probably about probably about half a teaspoon of glitter in so a fair amount of glitter because what we're looking for is a nice thick paste and when you've added the glitter into the paint you should get a say a nice thick paste Once you've got it nicely mixed, just start smearing it on the bauble. So I will usually take the excess off the little spatula thing first and then start getting it on my finger. Because what we're wanting to do, we're wanting to really push it down and fill up all of those grooves. And you literally do that working your way over. So either with your fingers or with a spatula or a brush or whatever else you've got. But what you're looking at is really getting it down in the grooves. Once you're happy, you've got most of it off, I will take a fair bit of it off on my hands. And then go and wipe my hands on some towels and then wash the last bit of the residue away. And then slowly start to wipe 
the rest of it away, away from the nicely varnished surface so that it only stays in the grooves in between. When you've got all the excess off, just put it on one side just to allow the paint or the glue, whichever you've used, just to dry off completely, and then your piece is effectively finished. To do the more complex design, I've got it to exactly the same stage where we've put our four. Um, segments of the purple on with the glitter and then all I'm going to do is I'm going to use the cutter to take out parts of this so you can either take out full circles right in the middle or part circles or a mixture of both and that's what I'm planning to do so all I'm going to do is literally press down and remove the clay so I'll do probably four of the large circles you quite often have to tilt or pivot this slightly so I'm going to do slightly more of it on this one so you can actually end up getting the whole bit picked out and let's do one so we had one over there so let's do one and then I'm going to go down the smaller sizes so this one might have a whole one in here and then let's do sort of a half one over here and just work your way around and decide where you want the circles or the cutouts to be. When you're happy that you've got all the circles cut out that you want, as before, make sure all the sides are nicely pressed down. Look back in, make sure that all the grooves are still going nicely up to the edge and that you've still got those lines in place. And then when you're ready, just pop it in its bowl and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. For the more complex one, exactly the same as we did beforehand. So cut out your um, next four shapes in the red. Um, and again, I checked beforehand to make sure they're the right size. Pop them in as we would if we were doing just a plain ordinary one. So in at the bottom, up against the side, all the way to the top, press down. So again, keeping the one side nice and tight. And then exactly as we did beforehand, press down the other side until you can see where you need to cut away. Pressing the craft life into the right again, just keep cutting down until you come up against the edge, hard edge of the baked clay. So you end up with a nice bit fitting against the, the purple clay. And do that around all four pieces. And then when you've got all four pieces in place, go back to your cutters, put them in the position where they were on the purple clay. If you can, cut down on the red. If you can't, then just use your craft knife to cut out the rest, but generally you can just about get the cutters back in there. And work your way down all through the cutters so you've cut out all the corresponding holes with the um, purple ones. And then go back and add a few more in into the spare bits of the red if you want to, if it looks like there's some places where you want to put the holes in. Here's a sheet of the green clay that I've prepared and all we're going to do now is we're going to take the same cutters and chop out the amount of circles we need to fill in the gaps in the bauble. I'll just do a couple to start and then you'll get what we're doing. So you literally just take them out and pop them in to the gaps. When all the holes have been filled up just make sure 
that the green clay is fitting nicely into the areas. Holding as gently as you can onto the baked parts of the clay whilst not touching the unbaked. Exactly the same, just find the places where you're going to fill in the grooves going from one side through to the other, this time going across the green rounds as well. As before, once all the lines are in and you're happy that they're all joined up, pop in your bowl, tent in aluminium foil and bake according to the manufacturer's instructions for the brand of clay you are using. So there we go, there's our one all finished with that nice tracery of gold lines and there's the slightly more complex one where we added the green circles in as well. So those are a couple of options. And when we were drawing the lines up and down and across our board, remember we also put the line that went in round the middle, and that's for something like this, where I've used it to add an additional bit round the middle part of the ball. And then I knew exactly where to do the cutouts because I used that midline. So that's one where I've just used a couple of different cutters to create some insets. So this is one where I've just done the glitter with the PVA glue. So you can see there the glitter does stand out. And this glitter wasn't quite the micro glitter, it was a slightly larger, so it works even on doing that. And then of course you can do them just with the plain clay. So this is one where you had just the plain clay. And what I did, did the two segments and then input the rounds in there, same as we did with this one. And on this one, once I'd finished all of that, I then just lightly sanded the clay, sealed it with the Renaissance wax, and then when you brushed over, this is the paint with the gold, it gave you that nice effect. And on this one, I did a much smaller line so that I actually used a needle to create the line for, so that's one of those. And on this one, it's just polymer clay, so exactly the same way as this one, did the polymer clay, cut out all the circles, this time did them in lines where the joins were on the segments, sanded, used the Renaissance wax over the top, and then this time I added bronze um, or copper um, paint, and then the glitter in that one, so that gives that. And for anyone who's just using this one smaller because it's a plastic bauble, whereas these are all the glass ones, and if you are using a plastic one and then the bit you need an extra bit to fit onto here. You can actually buy them. This is one of the places you can buy them for. You see bauble tops, and they come in either gold or in silver, and you can buy extra ones if you need to put them on. Just to show you how they would, would work, when I was doing it, I would open out the sides slightly more, then put some glue just on the outside of those, fit that over the top, a little bit of glue on this bit and this bit, preferably when you've got them squeezed together, so a little blue when they're like that, pop them in so that the glue of these bits then sticks against the inner edge of your piece and then your bauble is ready to go with the extra added weight of the clay on the outside. So there we go, some nice decorative baubles ready for the festive season. I hope you enjoyed that video and have great fun making some of your own. As always, thank you so much for watching and a particular thank you to those of you who subscribe. I really do appreciate it. I think that's it for now. See you next time. Bye.